reported in the media is, is simply not true. Um, so okay, okay. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm not donating $45 million a month to Trump. Right. Um, and uh, uh, now, now, what I have done is I've, I have created a, a pack or super pack, whatever you want to call it, yeah. um, which uh, is, I, you know, I simply call it the, the America pack. It's, uh, it's actually, it's not meant to be um, sort of a hyper-partisan uh, pack. It's, it's actually the, 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 the core principles of, of this America pack are, the intent is to promote the principles that um, made America great in the first place. So I, I wouldn't say that I'm, say, for example, MAGA, or make America great again. I, um, I think America is great. Um, I'm, I'm more MAG, make America greater. I think AI can be creative. AI can, I think you, AI will be, able, will be creative, yes. Original? Yes. And so AI will create art or music that will, will say that's, that's original? Yes. So there really is no future for, for any of us in this room. I mean, I don't want to be a downer here. I mean, um. <laughs> you're supposed to like, inspire people, not tell them they're not going to have a job. Um, <laughs> not every post I make is a banger. <laughs> you know, um, and I do shoot myself in the foot uh, from time to time. Um, but uh, you know, at, at least you know it's genuine. It's not yeah. some sort of uh, PR department deciding things. So, you know, if, if, if you're a normal human being and you speak freely, times when you will say things that you subsequently regret or are foolish, of course. Um, but if, if you're constantly um, going through a filter, now you're not being real. So. so. You've been quoted a number of times, yeah. Elon, on you'd like to die on Mars, but not on landing. Yes, I was, I was asked that in, a, in an interview if I wanted to die on Mars, but then I considered the corner case of dying on impact and of like, except for that case, you gotta consider the various corner cases. If, I'm gonna, if you're gonna die somewhere, might as well be Mars. I'd like to explore for a bit before dying. But yeah, I think, I think we want to be a multi-planet civilization. Can you just put it, I keep pressing you, but just, just for people who haven't thought this through and aren't familiar with it, and the cool parts of, of artificial intelligence are so obvious, you know, write your college paper for you, write a limerick about yourself. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's a lot there that's fun and useful. But can you be more precise about what's potentially dangerous and scary? Like, what could it do? What specifically are you worried about? Going with old sayings, the pen is mightier than the sword. Um, so the, if you have um, a super intelligent uh, AI that is capable of writing uh, incredibly well and, and in a way that is very influential, um, you know, convincing, uh, and then and, and, is, and is constantly figuring out what is more, what is more, what is more convincing to people over time, and then enter social media, for example, Twitter, uh, but also Facebook and others. You know, if somebody says something that's false, especially on our platform, you can then reply to it with a correction. And then I'm a huge fan of community notes. I've put we've put maximum resources and attention behind community notes. So if somebody tries to push a falsehood like Holocaust denial or something like that, they can immediately be corrected. And, and, they, and you can't get rid of the tag. It's like stuck on you. you know, you what does it describe my, my philosophy? It is a philosophy of curiosity. Um, it, um, I mean, I, I did have this existential crisis when I was uh, around 12 uh, about what's the meaning of life? Isn't it all pointless? Why not just commit suicide? Why exist? Um, I read the religious texts. Um, I read the philosophy books um, that, well, especially the German philosophy books, made me quite depressed, frankly. One should not read Schopenhauer and Nietzsche as a teenager. Um, but then I read uh, Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is a book on philosophy in the form of humor. And the point that uh, Adams was making there was that uh, we don't actually know what questions to ask. I'd say that you're somebody who really loves humanity, which is why you talk about expanding humanity's reach out to the stars. When you go to a place like, like Auschwitz, or when you walk the villages like Kibbutz Berry, 
after October 7th. Does that change your opinion of humanity, or does it reinforce what you think humanity can be on both the positive side and on, on the negative side? I think it is actually human nature to love humanity unless you are indoctrinated otherwise. I think the actual default for most people is to love humanity and to love being around. You can take, for example, like what's one of the worst punishments in prison is solitary confinement. And all solitary confinement means is that you're not, you're you, you don't get to hang out with the other prisoners, which might not be the best group of people to hang out with. But even that is considered a terrible punishment to not be able to hang out with other prisoners. So in truth, I think in our nature, we all love humanity unless we are indoctrinated otherwise. I think for a while there, I was like really getting demotivated and losing sleep over the sort of the threat of AI danger. And then I finally sort of became fatalistic about it and said, well, even if I knew it was annihilation was certain, uh, would I choose to be alive at that time or not? And I said, I probably would have choose to be alive at that time because it's the most interesting thing, um, even if there's nothing I could do about it. So then, you know, then basically a, sort of a fatalistic resignation helped me sleep at night because I was having trouble sleeping at night because of AI danger. Um, now, what to do about it? I mean, I've been the biggest, the, the one banging the drum the hardest, by far the longest uh, or at least one of the longest uh, on, for AI danger and, and these regulatory things that are happening, the single biggest reason they're happening is because of me. Um, and in some cases, uh, there were advertisers who were uh, insisting on censorship. And at, the, and at the end of the day, if there is censorship, uh, a choice between censorship and money, you know, if, if censorship and money or free speech and losing money, we're going to pick the second. We're going we're to support free speech uh, rather than, than uh, agree to be censored for, for money, which is, um, I think, the right moral decision. Now, of course, uh, advertisers have a right to appear next to content that they find uh, compatible with their brands. That's totally fine. I think that, that is, that, that's, that's, again, a choice of an advertiser to appear next to content they think fits with their brand. That's totally cool. But what, what is not cool is insisting that, that there can be no content that they disagree with on the platform. Uh, and if, if you do the, the rough math to power the United States, uh, which is a heavy user of electricity, uh, would only take, would, would take less than a 200 kilometer by 200 kilometer solar array, power the entire United States. And if you drive through, through the United States, there's plenty of sections of, of the United States where there is basically no people. Um, or another way to think of it is a small section of the Sahara could power all of Europe um, or, or the world. Now, I'm not, not saying you would be so concentrated in the placement of solar power because it's better to be more distributed, um, but the sheer magnitude of solar power that is available is often not quite understood. I think being a, becoming a space-bearing civilization is one of those things. If you ask kids anywhere around the world, what, is, what are some of the most inspiring things? You, know, you can ask a five-year-old, six-year-old anywhere in the world, and they're going to say space exploration is one of those things. And, and we want to make sure that, we're, that Apollo is not the high watermark. In fact, you mentioned at one point that, that you wrote a letter offering to run the Apollo program, I believe. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but, but, but and I would, I would have, you would have done a fantastic job. But the point is that the, the Apollo program was something that was inspiring to everyone around the world. And uh, we, we don't want the Apollo program to be the high water mark of human exploration. Mark my words, this is, this is simply a matter of time. Now, admittedly, I'm a little optimistic sometimes. Uh, you know, I'm, I, you know so I don't have complete lack of self-awareness. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but if I wasn't optimistic, this wouldn't exist. This factory wouldn't exist, you know? <laughs> so.